So what is the current roadmap and uh, how community is working on the PowerPoint development? And I see Korean community is like, they, I see many medias, they are really interested in retrieval. So could you please do some updates on it? Yeah, totally. So um, the current, there's a lot of teams working on PowerPoint across many um, areas of the stack. So everything from um, kind of improvements to how source writing works and how data ingestion works. Um, to how retrieval works, to then running computation around it, and and FEM and so on. Um, so the you know the, the network has spent the last couple of years um, building a huge amount of capacity, um, and so we built the largest decentralized network by you know many orders of magnitude. It is now so big um, that is uh, that it can finally compete with uh, large scale centralized providers, right? So. Um, we're, I think, at, like at 17 exabytes of capacity now, which is a super massive um, level of scale. Um, and that uh, starts to be competitive with centralized uh, providers. Now, in the last year, we've been very focused on onboarding a lot of data. So um, this includes building a lot of data storage on ramps, um, scaling, improving and scaling the Python Plus program to be able to enable a lot of participants to um, lean on incentive structures to bring on really valuable data sets into the network. Um, and we've helped support a lot of different applications that are building on top of Filecoin. Now, the um, roadmap for the development uh, teams, uh, there's, there's a few different tracks. So one track is around um, uh, improving uh, a lot of the um, core functionality of storage providers and improving the, um, there's a lot of tooling and important um, uh, pieces that need to, need to um, uh, re get refined. So think of things like uh, the Boost uh, system that um, brings in a much better way of making uh, storage deals and being able to kind of um, uh, give use storage providers a much better view into all of the data that they're storing. Um, then there is um, all of the track around um, actual retrieval. So, so this is there are several different uh, retrieval projects. So the, there's a large working group uh, called the, the Retrieval Markets Working Group, um, and there are several different projects working on on retrieval. Uh, so um, as I'll mention, kind of uh, one of them, uh, Saturn, uh, which is one of the ones that I, that I um, know a lot about, um, uh, which is a, a network that is building kind of regional uh, uh, sets of retrieval providers um, that are able to cache um, uh, content. So think of it uh, like a CDN um, that enables really fast retrievability of the content on Filecoin. Um, it's another um, project related to retrieval, uh, this, which is the network indexer, um, sort of the hash, which is a um, th that can enable storage providers to index all of their content and then be able to make it uh, retrievable to, uh, to end users. Uh, there's a lot of networks like Titan and, um, and many others that are like working on, on in different parts of, of the retrieval market. Yeah, thank you um, so much. And then yeah. probably, the, probably uh, two other mm -hmm. kind of important things to mention there. Uh, one is the FVM. So the Falcon yeah. virtual machine is coming uh, into the network. We just shipped the, um, the M1 upgrade and like that. So now the uh, the network is running on Wasm smart contracts, which is really, really awesome. Yeah. Um, and the next one uh, that, is, that is coming ahead is, is M2. Um, that'll introduce uh, user-based um, smart contracts, and that'll add a lot of programmability to Filecoin. Um, yeah. And then after that uh, comes compute over data. So that's being able to issue uh, compute jobs over the data that people are storing on Filecoin. So think of uh, being able to do large-scale machine learning pipelines or mm -hmm. other kinds of uh, compute jobs over the data that people have stored. I heard they are interested in the retrieval service provider. So, and what when is it ready to use? And how do you think about the incentivize for the retrieval service providers? Yeah, so so there will be several different retrieval networks, um, and each network is going to uh, tune for you know slightly different use cases, and you can imagine different different incentive flows uh, to them. Um, uh, again, I'll mention like uh, uh, one of them. So I think. Saturn is is the one is one of the ones that I'm, I'm most familiar with. Uh, there's also Mile, uh, which is an, another really um, a good set of tooling that that um, has a different economic model. Um, so the the networks are now testing with um, large scale um, amounts of traffic. So um, I know that Saturn, for example, is is testing with uh, millions of nodes and being able to um, serve things with very low latency, like sub second latency, um, to an, to kind of um, be able to serve. Uh, traffic with like CDN, like production quality, um, uh, CDN quality as, as people expected from, from any kind of cloud CDN. Um, now I think the, uh, when that's going to open up, 
um, it's, it's sort of like up to the standard team. I, I, um, I think that they're sort of targeting sometime in uh, Q3, Q4 um, for like the early, uh, early version. But you know, we'll see. We'll see how it develops over time. Um, it's one of these things where like um, better have like a really high quality network uh, and, and then grow really fast from there than um, than starting starting too early. But uh, definitely join the the Phil Saturn team uh, uh, channel on Slack to to okay. uh, look for updates and so on. I know that they're, that they're uh, looking for for testers and and so on. So if you um, want, uh, yeah, if you want to participate, go there. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that there are other networks that, like Milo and Mesos and, and and sorry, Milo and Titan and others are um, uh, building their own their own retail markets. And as you should go check out those networks as well. Yeah, and what is the incentivize? So how can like network providers or service providers get the economic benefits? Yeah, so the the um, the Saturn model is going to start with um, a an incentive structure based on uh, publisher payment. So publishers are going to uh, pay fees for uh, hiring the CDN to store and and um, serve the content, and um, when. And then the the retrieval providers are going to be um, paid some fees for for all of the requests that they serve. Um, so there's an incentive model based on on paying for uh, every single request that they serve out to uh, to end clients, um, uh, as well as any kind of caching that they do in certain regions. So there's a there's a a goal to be able to kind of pin specific content to specific regions so that it can be served really quickly from that region. Um, and so that that um, needs to be incentivized as well. Okay, thank you so much for your answer. Yeah, um, and I would like to jump to the next question. Like um, in Amsterdam, I first heard from you, you mentioned the Filecoin as a public good project. And uh, recently we see the um, global climate change issues. So how can Filecoin contribute to the um, climate change issues? And uh, I heard you also mentioning Filecoin green going to be a um, like carbon neutral even carbon yeah. positive projects so could you please mention about it and how can the like korean sps they can they start the falcon green yeah so i would say like uh just find out more about the project um you can go go to the uh, slack channel i think it's, it's phil green mm -hmm. um and i think um falcon dot energy is the is the um, dashboard that shows the energy used in the network, um, and I think green.falcoin.io is a is a website for the project. So go check those out and find out about um, you know the system and how it works and um, how to start using it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they also interested in the incentivize. So are you guys working on the Falcon Green incentivize economic model? So. Um, the economic incentives of Falcon Green is not clear what the economic incentives should be. Uh, for example, some people might say that the entire network should be operating with with green incentives. Mm -hmm. um, right now, uh, a lot of the credits uh, are being bought separately, um, and there are many specific source providers that are buying credits themselves. Um, and so that that already is, shows up in reputation systems. So, for example, clients that really want to store data with Green energy providers will choose those source providers, so they will bring their um, their data and their use to those source providers. So the think of uh, at the end of the day, clients get data cap and they select which source providers to use. So if clients care a lot about green energy use, they're going, going to give their deals to those source providers. So there's a very strong economic incentive there um, for clients to pick um, pick green source providers. Yeah, understand. Great. Thank you so much. And I think the next question is like, so we know you are inventor of IPFS Filecoin and how would you positioning the IPFS Filecoin into the whole Web3 landscape? Yeah, it's a great question. So, um, uh, well, first, IPFS is a way of, um, think of it as the, as the network to address and move the content of Web3. So you can use CIDs to address all of the data um, both you know files and specific data structures and objects and so on, uh, and then you can use Filecoin to back up uh, that data and, and serve it to other people, uh, including you know long-term archival storage or uh, CDN fast delivery. Um, the we want the Filecoin network to be of great service to all users out there. So we want strong connections and bridges to every other um, you know strong blockchain out there. So we we want want it to be the case that. Um, in, 
any whoever's building applications or smart contracts in, in any network or any chain, um, they reach for backing up all of the content directly on, on Filecoin. Uh, Filecoin is the largest, you know, it's by, by many orders of magnitude, the largest uh, source network. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not, we, we are at the scale of, um, you know, again, 17 exabytes of, of capacity. Um, uh, we surpassed 100 petabytes of, of actual storage used uh, this year. I haven't even looked at the, at the latest. Um, uh, let's see what it is now. Um, It's more than 18. Yeah, yeah, more than 18 is uh, exercise the capacity, but but what about the uh, the actual uh, deals? Okay. Um, yeah, for deals, we're now at you know, 140 petabytes of, uh, of of storage in in actual usage, right? Which is really amazing. Like that is many orders of magnitude larger than than the next larger large um, central, centralized storage network. So that just sort of puts us as in the in the best category for um, storing all of the content produced by Web3 applications. Um, it's really the only network that can handle proper web scale mm -hmm. um, uh, workloads, right? So if you think of large scale applications like um, you know, TikTok or YouTube or Twitter or you know, those kinds of um, applications that people around the world use, um, th those require exabytes of storage and they require massive amounts of computation uh, and so only a network like Backlund can actually handle those yep. kinds of use cases. So now there's a lot of work to do to be able to support applications like that. There's all kinds of computational pipelines that need to land. Um, we need to be able to make it, e we need decentralized computational networks and we need to make it easier to develop applications. But that's sort of where um, we and a lot of other groups are headed. Uh, first off, you can already store all that content uh, on Backlund. And already you can start retrieving it from specific source providers, uh, even through the IPFS gateway. Um, I think once the ritual market uh, comes to nine in the next few months, um, then we'll get sub-second, really fast, high bandwidth retrieval for all that data. So I think, it, um, you know, I think uh, just given how close that is, I would encourage developers to just start building yep. it now. Yep. Like uh, if, if you're if you're working on a, on a media application and you want to, and you're thinking of yeah. starting yeah. to use um, Pacman and for this, yeah. um, I would probably start developing now so you can launch alongside the, the ritual markets um, mm -hmm. in the upcoming months. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for the interview.